Welcome and thank you for tuning in to episode number 11 of 10 Tesla Topics, your show for Tesla-related news, rumors, and stories. My name is Max Maurice, and today's show is for Tuesday, February 28th, 2017. Topics discussed today are the following. Tesla just got more expensive in Hong Kong. Some crash footage. Autopilot 2 hardware now has parallel parking. Tesla is officially in New Zealand and possible Model 3 production numbers. Topic number one comes from Electric. So Hong Kong currently has a fast growth in EV adoption, uh, which Tesla is a big part of because they had 80% market share of Hong Kong's 5,800 EVs as of this July. Now it's estimated that that number is now over 7,000 vehicles, with Tesla still maintaining over 80% market share. So, I mean, it kind of goes without saying, it makes Hong Kong a very important market uh, for Tesla, but that's about to change. The local government imposed a massive first registration tax in order to control new vehicle deployment, which so far had not affected electric vehicles. On the least expensive version of the Tesla Model S, the tax adds up to the equivalent of $56,000 US, which, well, almost doubles the price of the vehicle. On February 22nd, the government announced that as a part of a new budget, it is modifying the program. So of course it affects all electric vehicles, but since Tesla is dominating the market, it is the company most affected. So the best case scenario, if you could even call it that, it increases the price of a Model S by over 40,000 US dollars. And the worst case, so this is for the top of the line Model S and X P100D Ludicrous with all the options, uh, it increases the price uh, by over $150,000 US, um, which is quite a bit if you ask me. And so interestingly, they made the announcement on the same day uh, that there was a limit to order. Um, So all all I can really say is, uh, what up with that? Topic number two comes from Electric. Now, last year, there was a crash involving a Model S, and the people involved in the crash basically credited the Tesla to save their life. So that same story is coming back in the news this week, as we now have footage of the accident taken by the autopilot camera and recovered from the salvaged vehicle. But just a little backtrack, so Tesla actually took this story and added it in their little customer story sections uh, on their website, um, which which everyone can see. It's like, for the most part, it's all like uh, good stories, you know. Uh, it encourages people to buy the, the vehicle, which is great. But so, yeah, Tesla Model S owner Michelle Scott gave an account of her husband's accident, which happened on April 26, 2016. I quote, Bill was going about 30 miles an hour in a typical late afternoon, Baltimore-Washington metro traffic. It's route he takes every day, and it backs up in the same spots every day. A box truck, clearly not familiar with his regular traffic phenomenon, rear-ended Bill at full speed, the force that pushed Bill's Model S into the tractor trailer that was hauling two jet engines. Like, uh, that's, that's, I mean, not light cargo, to say the least. From there, he spun into another SUV. The median finally stopped him. So it sounds bad, but it looks even worse. Like here, here are a couple of pictures just to show the, the damage uh, made to the car. But so since last year, Tesla hacker uh, Jason Hughes uh, has been able to recover the last few frames taken by Tesla's autopilot camera after an accident. So Hughes got his hands on Bill and Michelle's Model S this week and managed to recover some footage from the accident. You can clearly see that the Model S crashing into the truck and the SUV, though the fact that it is being rear-ended first is, of course, not visible from the autopilot camera. Now, very fortunately, Bill wasn't severely injured, uh, as mentioned before, and the accident because of the cabin of the car remained intact. Topic number three comes from Electric, and just a short little topic here. So Tesla has started to push yet another update to the vehicles equipped with the Autopilot 2.0 hardware in order to bring it closer to the level of the first generation Autopilot. So Tesla has now introduced the Auto Park for parallel parking on enhanced Autopilot vehicles. It introduces the first Auto Park feature, though it's only parallel parking, uh, but that just means that the full Auto Park uh, and the Summon features are not too far down the road. 
Topic number four comes from Tesla Roddy. So Tesla celebrated its official launch in New Zealand by delivering the first Model S and X vehicles to their owners at a special launch event. Eight cars were presented to their new owner at the Tesla event, and each of the eight Tesla customers, uh, they were all called onto stage during the event and handed keys in front of the assembled crowd. Um, so if you just want to visualize it, it's it's kind of like what happened at the Model X uh, event. There were the first few founders uh, X's were uh, given to the first customers. And the last topic of the day, topic number five, comes from Electric. So the start of the Tesla Model 3 production and the following ramp up are becoming to be quite the focus of the industry watchers and Tesla enthusiasts. Most Wall Street analysts expect that it will be both late and slower to ramp uh, up to volume uh, than what the company is guiding. But first, let's just try and understand what Tesla's actual plan for the production ramp up of the Model 3 really is. So there are a lot of things to consider here, but it's important to clarify the difference between orders, production, and deliveries. So we'll be talking about production numbers here based on parts ordered. Uh, CEO Elon Musk said during the conference call last week, uh, and I quote, So when we place parts orders with our suppliers, we've told them 1,000 a week in July, 2,000 a week in August, and 4,000 a week in September. These are parts ordered. Then the parts need to arrive, then they need to be turned into a car, and the car needs to be delivered to customers. So as mentioned in the previous episode, I believe, deliveries will be concentrated in California and of course to Tesla and SpaceX employees first. So since the cars are not going too far away from Tesla's Fremont factory at first, Production should track close to deliveries, right? Uh, You produce one and you deliver it like basically the same day. But after a few months, Tesla will start moving, you know, to the east, north and south. uh, And delivery delays can be relatively important, which is why we will focus on production numbers. Based on Tesla's parts ordered and using a 10-day delay, Electrek tracked a perfect execution of a Model 3 production ramp at about 80,000 units in 2017. Now, 80,000 units, you you might be thinking, wow, that's quite a bit. Well, if you think about it, that'll barely make a dent in Tesla's backlog of, you know, uh, I think it's around 400,000 reservations. Uh, And again, that 80,000, that's assuming a perfect execution. And Musk pointed out himself during the conference call, it only has to be 1% and then we either have to make those parts manually at great cost or slow down the production rate. And he's talking about here 1% uh, of the deliveries going wrong. Uh, And it's a great cost. We make something manually as opposed through mass production and it can be 10, 20, 30 times more expensive. He later added, the rate of production is as fast as the slowest component in the vehicle. And when you have several thousand unique items, it can move as fast as uh, the least likely and worst executing part of Tesla or our suppliers. That's just the way it goes. However, Musk restated that so far, everything is still on track, but a lot can still happen from between now and July. So I'll ask you, uh, let me know in the comments below, what do you think Tesla's actual Model 3 production uh, will be in 2017? Will it be 80,000? Will it be less? Will it be more? Uh, Let me know in the comments uh, down below. And with those five Tesla topics, uh, that concludes episode number 11 uh, for Tuesday, February 28th, 2017. For any questions, remarks, or even criticism, I encourage you to follow the show's Instagram and Twitter pages at 10 Tesla Topics. That's T E N T E S L A T O P I C S. And if you wish, you can also send me an email. You know, why not? Uh, that's at 10 Tesla Topics at gmail.com. That's T E N T E S L A T O P I C S at gmail.com. But the easiest way to get in contact would, of course, be to just subscribe to my channel, uh, like the video, and also comment uh, here on YouTube. So we'll see you right here next Saturday for the next show. Thank you for listening. And of course, have yourself a model excellent day.